But yeah, I'll try to speak loudly enough. Now, I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art that is the regular expression, but for those select few that possess the predisposition, I can teach you how to bewitch the mind and ensnare the senses, tell you how to bottle a address or brew a date or even put a stopper in a U.S. phone number like this alchemical incantation. <laughs> I mean, do you see the devil in that? <laughs> okay, now, no one would look at that and go, oh, U.S. phone number, no problem. No one, no one does that, right? But hopefully at the end of this little session, uh, you'll be able to, like, pick it apart, which is what everybody has to do with these kind of things. Now there are, I just found out that there are two regular expression workshops at Open Source Bridge this week. Um, Trey uh, Hunter is also doing one on Thursday. Is Trey here? Oh, okay. All right. Trey's going to be doing a uh, pretty much the same thing. So I kind of, you know, thought, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll give him a little bit of an introduction. Uh, so that uh, if I go a little fast and um, you don't keep up, don't worry. Trey will figure it all out for me later on on Thursday. Uh, that said, if uh, you have any questions at all, just interrupt me and we'll just have a little fun here. Okay? All right, so let's, let, let's just kind of start uh, to figure out why we even care about this stuff. I mean, if I was to ask you to compare two strings... Eh, that's easy. That's normal stuff. You know, most languages have some sort of an equality operator, right? What about a string that started with, like, the letter H? You know, that, too, is pretty easy, right? It, you could take a string and pretty much treat it like a list, you know, and pull out the first uh, element, you know, compare it. Very easy, right? Uh, what if it's not capitalized? Well, okay, we can just make an or statement. It's getting a little long, maybe a little, you know. Uh, what if the word starts with the word hello? Well, all right, most languages have some sort of uh, starts with or an index or this sort of thing. And what if it's case insensitive? Well, once again, I think most languages have this sort of thing. What about hello anywhere in the string? You know, does your language support it? I think most of them do as well. But what if you had to do something a little nastier? Five digit zip codes, matching multiple words, trimming white space, whether it's a space, a tab, or maybe a Unicode M space. Uh, what about a word like a or an, but as a standalone word, not part of another word, right? Or phone numbers, credit card numbers, this sort of thing. Now you start getting into this situation where to figure this stuff out, if you were to do that programmatically, eh, you're now dealing with monsters, right? So, or at least monstrous code. Cue the XKCD comic in three, two, one. So, I, I do like this comic just because it does pull across the idea that once you learn something, you'll start using it in a lot of different places. Um, and while regular expressions can be very helpful, I think everybody also remembers this quote as well. Um, you know, because uh, Jamie uh, Zwinski way back, oh, I don't know, yeah. Back last century, I guess I could say, uh, they were having an argument on an Emacs chat thing about embedding Perl in there, and uh, he's yeah. You know, so yes, if you have a problem, you think you can solve it with regular expressions, you might have to. Right? I, I kind of think that once you get out of school, there's usually a few things they forgot to tell you, uh, or forgot to teach you: mastering your editor, uh, Git. Uh, Shell, you know, Bash. Did you learn Bash at school? I guess uh, I'm understanding some people are actually learning some things, but regular expressions often are not taught. And yet, once you're out of school, it's something we use quite a bit. 
just uh, yesterday, Rob Pike uh, tweeted this thing. Um, not sure I totally agree with it. Uh, Rob Pike is the guy who, uh, he's kind of one of those giants in the industry. He uh, uh, invented the Go programming language along with uh, uh, Ken Thompson. Yeah, anyway. So let me start, though, by kind of answering two questions a lot of people have. Uh, first, why are they so strange looking? And I guess the other one is, why are they always so different from language to language? So let me start with a little history here. Uh, back in 1956, uh, Stephen uh, Claney, that's how he likes to pronounce his name, uh, came up with this uh, a paper where he was trying to describe how to represent languages and uh, tom tom this sort of thing and he came up with this regular uh, set idea uh, about a, a decade later ken thompson who with dennis ritchie i don't know if you know this guy or not he's kind of the one who started unix right so we pretty much use his stuff you know constantly day to day uh, if you get down at our at the programming level for sure um, and he uh, decided that he wrote this editor one of the first ones called ed very simple right and the idea though is that he would use this uh, the math from the regular expressions and made an implementation that he could actually manipulate things the reason is the cursor was patented in 1967 it was granted in 1970. I mean, we probably don't even think about the cursor <laughs> being a patented thing, but it kind of was. And uh, now this is the keyboard I cut my teeth on. Notice there's no up and down arrow key. This one was pretty revolutionary because it had a left and a right arrow. Right? Moving a cursor around a screen for an editor is not something that we often did. If you wanted to change line 15, you just typed it in again. And so his idea was he could manipulate these things with this regular expression. Well, uh, when editors started to come out in the 70s, well, it was still pretty, e uh, pretty handy to still have this around. And so all of our favorite editors and stuff started to in uh, implement this. Now, one of the commands in ED was the G command. Um, and the G would allow, that, that meant global. So you could look at an entire thing. You didn't have to specify the, the, the number line range. And then you could put a regular expression in it. And then you could use the P to say, print those lines. That's where we got the word grep from, was from this thing. So this was so popular that uh, Henry Spencer decided to make a library that everybody could use. So you didn't have to re-implement it each time. And with that library, a lot of the databases used his and integrated it in there. Uh, but about the same time, Larry Wall, writing Perl, decided to write his own regular expression and, and ex expanded it quite a bit. It was, I think, everyone's favorite. Um, so we made that into a library itself that other languages, and most languages kind of pull on from this for better or worse, or completeness or not. Uh, so my point to all of this was to kind of show that uh, first, like SQL, regular expressions have this mathematical basis. That's why it's so useful and helpful. But there were a couple of little rough spots. So over the years, we've been fixing them in many incompatible ways. So if you go from one language to another, you may notice that the bulk of the stuff is the same, but there's a few things that will be different. Um, so, let's try it, shall we? I figured it might be more fun if you typed along with me. So feel free to go to one of these little things. I've put together a online workshop where you could type in regular expressions and have it highlight some text. And you can take two places. I've got um, just the what I'm calling the worksheet only is the first URL, and that's kind of what I recommend. Um, and then later on, though, you can use the second uh, link to actually see uh, the instructions or the exercises that you can try out. 
keep in mind the exercises uh, have divulged a little bit from my presentation because this morning I realized there were a few things I should probably fix. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so everybody there? Is good slash reg eps. That should be pretty straightforward. All right, here we go. So you'll notice on the right hand side, or on the very top, is a little editor. And we can type anything we want in here. So let's type the word math. Now, uh, there is a button called show, uh, and you can click on it if you want to. If you wait long enough, it'll just work. Um, so you see the word math, or at least the letters M-A-T-H, are highlighted all through this. Now, to make this easier, I've made white space optional. So if you typed something like this, it will still work. Now, normally, a space matches a space. And so most regular expressions don't have that. But uh, since Larry Wall added that to his Perl thing, I thought it was a good idea. So in this case, uh, we can turn on and off the white space in order to have it match or not match. Also, uh, if you capitalize something, it'll still work unless you turn off this case insensitive button. All right, so notice that if you were to type in of math, it won't match unless you turn the white space off. And I'll show you how we'll uh, match of math with a space in it in a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, any questions? Okay, forward into the fast. All right, uh, now, most of the time, you want a letter, you just type it, it matches, okay? But uh, if we want to match the weird stuff, like any character or this sort of thing, that's when we're going to need something we call a meta character. So let's do our first meta character, the period. So type r dot 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 r. Let's see what it matches. Recursion. You can scroll down and it's like, oh, laboratory and reserve. Okay, so it'll match a few things. The dot basically refers to anything. Um, trying to think of some ways to help memorize all of the cryptic characters here. Uh, but a dot is a point, and a point can point to anything. How about that? <laughs> all right. Type the word theorem. Ah, but we want the theorem that only matches the end of the word. Okay, so we want to put the period in here. But if we put period, well, that could stand for anything, including the end of line in this case. So what we do is we put a backslash in front of it. Now, uh, backslash, I call it the kryptonite, because it will take something that was special, the dot, and it'll make it unspecial and normal. If you want to actually search for a backslash, you do two of them. And we call this uh, escape. So it, we call it escaping the, the characters there. All right, let's type the word languages, but put a question mark at the end. Now the question mark says, technically it says zero or one. Uh, um, values of the previous character. So that makes the S optional, essentially. So this will match both the language here and languages. Okay. Let's try E star and E. Okay, so in this case, the star here uh, represents zero or more. In other words, the E is optional, but we could have it and we could have as many E's as we want as long as we have an NE at the end. So this will match uh, the NE in one as well as the EENE -E -E in clean A. <laughs> clean E. All right, try uh, the plus. Now the plus says one or more. 
of the previous character. So in this case, we have to at least have one E. But we could have a whole bunch of them. Now the one here is, the word one, is not highlighted anymore for that reason. Okay, we, we call them quantifiers. How you remember them, all right, so this is how I do it. Uh, zero times one is zero. Zero plus one is one. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> the question mark's easy, though. Do you want it or not, right? You know, it's... All right, now, let's try this one. One dot star nine. All right, now look what it highlighted here. It highlighted a whole mess of stuff on the first line. The, this star and the plus, we, we call them greedy, meaning they will take as much as it takes to math. And so in this case, the one and the nine are kind of spread out, and that's fine. It just, it'll take as much as we want. And, you know, I don't think this is lovely, but let's do it anyway. If you put a question mark here, and let me just put some spaces out around that. Yeah? Um, so, I noticed when we put in the one star star nine, mm -hmm. it goes 1909 through January 1994. Is it going to, why would it not just stop the 1909? Right, that's, that's what, because it's greedy. So it's going to take as much as it can to still fit, to still okay, work. So it doesn't just stop the so it doesn't stop, it keeps going until it says, okay, that's as much as I could grab, that's what I'm going to map. Now, if you want that behavior, what I would think is expected behavior, to grab just the smaller one, we're going to put a question mark here. Now, the, the star question mark is one, let's call it one operation. It's just one thing. It's not two separate stuff. But that turns that star into a non-greedy version. And now we can match the 19 with nothing inside of it. Um, and down lower in, let's see if we find anything else. Yeah, so here it'll match this one nine, but not the others. Now, if we uh, were to put a plus here, now we have to have at least one something and a nine. And now we'll get the whole year here, we'll get the 199 here, um, but, okay, so here's something else, see, we'll still match this one, because we have to have something in here, so it's going to keep on going until it gets to the end here. Does that kind of make sense? Um, yeah, we don't have a lot of two-letter operators, but or two-character operators, but yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. I guess I'm curious to go back to the one dot star nine. Um, one dot why it stops where right it says and doesn't just continue on until the very last line text. Ah, okay. That is my implementation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what normally happens is line breaks can end it. Now, in this case, what we're dealing with is HTML. Uh, so if you, we looked at the underlying HTML, we'd see that this thing happened on one line. Uh, the, even though it looks like there's a break right here in the HTML, there's not. So it'll match that and not go to the end of the text. Uh, but you, usually uh, in your favorite language, you get, there's usually an option to say, hey, match the whole thing and ignore line breaks. But, uh, but normally line breaks uh, do matter. Great question. Yeah, I forgot to even bring that up. Um, okay, so I don't know. Uh, trying to make this non-greedy. <laughs> star, question mark, uh, I was trying to come up with something that would help me remember it. Okay, uh, here's something easy. You look at this and it looks like something you would expect. The vertical bar is an or expression, so any side, either side of that vertical bar it's going to match. So let's try typing that. 
Oh yeah, see how fast I can type? And there we go, matches all. And we could actually do three words here in the same way. Okay, so it'll match all three of those kind of words there. That's the easy one. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's try matching a single character as an or. Uh, and in this case, we put them in brackets. So let's just type that in. W, A, O, and R. So now what we're looking for here is a W and an R with a single letter in the middle, and the single letter would be either an A or an O. So we'll find the W, O, R in work and W, A, R in the middle of aware. Okay, so the characters inside the bracket become a single letter, single character. All right, so if we want to search for years in the yeah, this looks awful, doesn't it? Okay, but it should match all of our years of 19 something or another. Um, an option you can do is a range. So it says anything from 0 to 9. Try not to use ranges. Ranges are kind of bad. Why would you think? Anyone want to take a guess? Dan? Uh, if you did like a range that included like upper and lowercase letters, it might be uh, you, you you can. I mean, I could say A like this, and it will match what you kind of think it would. It often works. Where it gets to be a problem is what does that range really mean when you're dealing with Unicode characters, right? Or things like that. So you could get kind of weird stuff. So uh, that's why it's probably not what we want. So let me get to that in just a second. Let's do the opposite, though, before I move on. So type this in. This will be fun for us, like all of this is, right? <laughs> N, L, and E. All right, so what we're saying here is I want to match an O and an E, and I want some letter between there, but that letter cannot be an N or an L. So now we will match oat or or in the theoretical, but we won't match coal here. Okay, so uh, now this only works if the carrot is at the beginning. If the character is like here, now it'll match o, the o, the coal and the one because it's now looking for th uh, any one of these three letters. Carrot is now normal because it's not the beginning. Okay. Um, just remember, you don't like cooked carrots at the beginning of your meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying here. <laughs> All right, so like I say, ranges like 0 to 9 are bad. What we really want is a type. Uh, so we have our old friend kryptonite. And if we put it with the letter D, it will now match any digit, a number. Okay. So if we did four of those guys, hey, we'll match our years, four-digit years that uh, work for anywhere. Okay. And S is a space, and it means any white space. So this could be tabs, it could be carriage returns if you've turned on match the whole text, right? But it also match all those non uh, those Unicode things like uh, M space and N space that you may have embedded in your text, which you might be surprised. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried this, copying, pasting something from a web page, and you put it in your text editor, and it automatically flips it into U UTF-8, and then you try doing a search for a space, and it's like, why didn't it match? Oh that HTML page had some special things in there. Okay, so now we can match our of math here. 
because we're going to put that space in there. Now it will match of mathematical. Okay. Now, normally spaces mean the space character, and so we take that out. And boy, that's hard to read, isn't it? And this is where we're starting to get why regular expressions can be difficult to parse. But, like I say at the bottom, serious nerd cred if you can, right? All right, now let's try to mat let's try to match the word the, but as a full word, not like part of theoretical. Okay, so in this case, we use this krypton here, backslash b. Backslash b uh, is a behavior. It actually doesn't match anything in particular. It just says I'm I'm looking for a word boundary here. So this could be at the uh, beginning or end of a sentence. Uh, it just can't have another letter or something next to it. This is really useful. Okay, so let's make sure. Yeah, no, didn't see anything wrong in here. Okay, uh, let's, you know, look for the letter A, but only as a single letter. Or, hey, let's put our question mark with an N. Now we can match either A or N. If we want to match all three of these, we're going to have to have a vertical bar with, because um, we're going to match a whole word on, so we'll put the boundary checks on both sets of the word. This is kind of probably the best way we could do this. Okay, going good? All right. Okay. Remember, B is for boundary. How about that? That's an easy one. All right. Um, if we want four digit years, we could do uh, a digit and then curly braces with a four on the inside. That's the same as just typing backslash D four times. So the question is, which of these two approaches do you like better? Which makes it more readable? I don't know what to tell you in this case, <laughs> but uh, it makes a lot of sense when you're trying to parse UUIDs or things like that where you can have a huge number of things that you need to match exactly the number of, but uh, you don't want to type too much of that. All right, so let's try to find our year ranges. Okay, so here we go. This will be Another fun activity here. All right, so here I've got, I'm looking for four digits plus, there we go. I'm looking for 1939 to 40, right, like this, okay? What if we wanted years and this? So in this case, we can use our vertical bar, and now I've got years, and the year ranges are set. Okay, that's good. Uh, However, we're typing a little bit. You know, you can't, it's not that I'm looking for year ranges and years. I'm just saying that that year range here could be optional. Now, what, you, what we'd want is to put that question mark at the end saying, hey, I want this last bit optional. But question mark says only work with the previous character. So what we do in this case is we'll just put parentheses around this group. Put some extra spaces here to make it easier to read. All right, so in this case, I'm looking for four digits with an optional dash and two digits. And now I have my years and I have my year ranges. Yeah, parentheses, those are pretty straightforward, right? Um, and yeah, the, the parentheses, you can put a plus or a star at the end of it as well. So this one's, I think, fairly easy to remember. Although, uh, some implementation actually flip these around where you have to do, uh, you have to escape your parentheses and not regular, so yeah. Now, what we use these, uh, these groupings, these parenthetical groups for a lot is when you're actually programming. All right, so 
uh, and I'm not exactly sure how best to represent this, but let's change this. Let's put this code in here. All right, so I've got, I'm looking for two digits, and I'm just looking for another group of two digits. Now, I didn't make it optional. I'm looking for four digits here, but I just put the grouping around two of them. Now, if you put your mouse over any of the highlighted ones, it will show you what was in parentheses. So, and it's, we usually refer to those as either backslash one or dollar sign one uh, or group one. Group zero will match all of it, but group one is, is what's in parentheses. Let's go back here. Come on, show me again. There we go. So it's giving me zero nine. Now, why this is important is you can now deal with uh, what's in the parentheses. So let's suppose you're trying to match something you know, large. I want this big thing, but what I really want or I care about is just this one bit or this bit and this bit. You put parentheses around them and, you, and it'll extract them for you. Uh, so like if I had an editor, I could change in 1941 to in the 1900s by using some code. Now this is JavaScript, but everyone, every language has something similar. Uh, Trey's going to be showing you how to do this in Python, right? So, uh, but here's the JavaScript thing. So we're going to take this string and there's a replace method on that. And here is the regular expression. And regular expressions in JavaScript and some other languages are uh, denoted with uh, slashes. Okay, So here I've got parentheses, uh, looking for two digits, and parentheses, and I'm going to extract that, and that will be equal to this dollar sign one. So I'm going to replace this whole thing with the dollar sign 100s. So if I have 1941, it'll come up with the 1900s. If I had 1813, it'd come up with the 1800s, this sort of thing. <coughs> Clear as mud. Okay, because if you get this, you've got it all. Because <laughs> this, is, this, this is the last bit of magic, really. Um, Try, and it's, it's the one part that I didn't figure out how to play with, but Trey will give it to you, you know, since he'll be able to show it to you with Python, so you can actually play with that aspect. All right, uh, let me hit a couple of more things in the remaining time that I've got here. Uh, backslash W matches any word, but by word, <laughs> let's try to figure out what a word means. Let's do, let's look for three letters. Wait, did this match three letter words? Well, it matched any sequence of three letters. Okay, that's why it will match C O L, but not the E. <laughs> but it gets all of it in clean A. All right, so that's not what we want. So let's put our backslash B in here at the beginning and the end. So now we're looking for three letter words and we found it. Okay, if we want to look for three, four, or five letter words, we can use this little syntax where we put a little comma and this this will is essentially a range so I'm now looking for a word that has three four or five now notice that when I say W meaning a word it matches a year <laughs> okay because hey what's considered a word in regular expressions is either a letter a number or the underbar uh, underbar And, in, and when it comes to Unicode, it gets really kind of funny. Just warning you there. Uh, the three comma, uh, what the, if I don't put the end of the range, it says more than. So here I'm going to look for any word that is three letters or larger. So I should match Stephen, Cole, and Clean, but I won't match and or of. All right, so there's a complete list of, yes, Slash W and three. Uh, I'm trying to understand. Uh, it matches the first word Stephen. It matches until E, the last E. And in case of cleaning, it matches the whole word. So I'm trying to understand 
why it doesn't match the whole you know, steep thing. Ah, because there's a space right here. So there's a space, so it gets Stephen, it'll match Cole, and it'll match Cleany, but it doesn't match the space in between, because that kind of separates them. Because space is, is not matched to slash W. Yeah, Trey? I think there might be a few separate matches of the three characters in the comic. If you remove the comic there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we get rid of the comma here... Okay, it's going to match any sequence. Well, let me also get rid of the Ds here. So, that we... so now it's going to match any sequence of three letters. So here it'll match S-T-E-P-H-E, -E, but not that N. And it'll match the C-O-L, but not that E. Yeah, so this is actually two separate matches here even though it's all highlighted as one. So it doesn't match overlapping? Right? Yes, it, it normally doesn't, at least right. not in this case, yeah, the, with the way this implementation works. Um, and yeah, you can, there's, you know, f uh, long lists of things you can start to search for, but... Um, Let's get to that magic. Remember I told you we would be able to understand it? All right. So step one, I'm going to break this up into... Let's see if I can get... <laughs> you got to love uh, the web here, right? Okay, so look, uh, I'm going to break it up into separate lines, put some spaces, and I've got some comments in here, and this will work. Okay, let's see if we can walk through this. Okay, so slash B. You know what that is, right? I'm looking for a word boundary to start. And here I'm looking for a one followed by either a dash or a space, but either one of those is optional. And that whole thing here is optional. So now I have that optional one-digit code. Okay. Now, if you want to follow along, go right ahead. So uh, I have some phone numbers here. If you pull down this, and uh, we can... Type this all in, copy, paste, and show it. So see, I see I have all the standard phone numbers, but not the bad ones. Okay, so let's keep walking down here. All right, then this is followed by, uh, now in this case, I've escaped the parentheses. So I'm actually looking for a parenthesis, but that parenthesis is optional. Okay, because you could have area codes with or without parentheses. Inside there, I'm looking for three digits. And I'm going to put them in a group here so I can extract that later on. And then that could be followed by a parenthesis that's optional. Notice that you could have a beginning parenthesis, but not the final parenthesis. Oops, I've got some work to do. Okay. <laughs> All right, then that's followed by a dash, a space, a dot, or a slash, and that's optional. And that's followed uh, by three digits, followed by one of these, you know, and this is optional as well, four digits, and we end with a backslash B. So it works pretty well, but not exact, and now you know why sometimes when you're entering a form on a web page and you type in your phone number and it doesn't like it, I want a real phone number. It's like, that is a real phone number. Yeah, they need work on the regular expression. All right, feel proud of yourself that you kind of can parse that? All right, so extra credit. I put some of your favorite programming languages in here. Um, and uh, so you feel free to try playing around and trying to highlight various things. And uh, yes, because I'm dealing with HTML and I have to turn the HTML into weird HTML in order to highlight it, you'll find bugs. I'm still trying to figure out how to get rid of those, but hey, pull request welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, any other questions? Is, is this an open source project? Oh yeah, it's all up on GitHub. Everything's on GitHub nowadays, right? I, I, I'm going to fix that. 
like I say, today I realized, oh, I need to do extra stuff, so I was busily changing things and didn't get to fix that. I, I'll do that soon. Since the or reading, if I do the date or the date range, will it highlight date ranges or just the date? The year uh, good question. I don't know. <laughs> let's, let's try figuring it out. Okay, uh, I got two minutes. Yeah, let's do that. That'd be a good idea. Da, 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 da. Oh, there we go. Pardon? Uh, I will put it on the description to this class. It's... Um, it's on my GitHub account. I'm Howard Abrams, and that's the GitHub account. Um, and it's called Regular Expression Workshop. Um, but yeah, I'll put it on this page. Yeah, because I think I can put little links. At least we could last year. Okay, yeah. Um, or I'll tweet it too, because obviously everyone follows me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I do have business cards with my email address if anybody wants those. How's that? Okay, now we'll cover something. All right, well, thanks for coming. <laughs>